Hi, this is Habiba. In this session, we are going to discuss how to run bootstrap for our measurement model. Let's go for the calculate option. As we have earlier used the consistent PLS algorithm, we will go for the consistent PLS bootstrapping. Let's see what is the consistent PLS bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is a non-parametric procedure that can be applied to test whether the coefficients such as outer weights, outer loadings and path coefficients are significant by estimating standard errors for the estimate. And the consistent PLS bootstrapping can only be used if you have used the consistent PLS algorithm. And uh, this uh, procedure has no individual parameters that need to be specified. However, the parameters for the normal bootstrap procedure need to be specified. Let's see what are the options. For the sub samples, we will go for the 5000 sub samples. We will select the parallel processing. For the basic and complete bootstrapping, you can either choose basic or complete depend upon your context of your study and your results in the measurement model. Suppose, uh, for example, for the basic bootstrapping is on default and it gives you the results for um, uh, path coefficients, indirect effects, total effects, outer loading, and outer weights. And this option is much faster. The large number of the samples is drawn and useful for preliminary data analysis. But if you need to have the statistical significance for other matrices such as ABE, composite reliability, Cronbach alpha, heterogeneous monitored ratio, and SRMR, and all square, you can go for the complete bootstrapping, though it takes more time as compared to the basic bootstrapping. For the confidence interval method, we have the percentile bootstrap, standardized and bias correct and accelerated correct and accelerated bootstrap method. Uh, which is on default and uh, what is the significance of this uh, BCA bootstrap method it is the most stable method that does not need excessive computing time and let's go for the test type uh, the choice of your test type that either you will use the one tail and two tail test it depend upon your hypothesis whether your hypothesis is one tail or two tail for the significance level you will select 0.05 so we will start the calculation and uh, though it's, uh, it will take a little uh, longer time now as we got these results and uh, let's see uh, what we uh, uh, results we have uh, and as earlier we have found in our uh, measurement model analysis uh, we can see also here the path coefficients uh, so you can see that the path coefficient for ed to ii is significant and similarly the main focus was our path coefficient for our exogenous variable ed towards the main endogenous variable we and it shows that, that this uh, path coefficient or that uh, uh, regression equation is uh, uh, significant and for the other uh, main independent or exogenous variable we can for gw you can see that uh, this relationship is insignificant and as you can see here also as we have this show that this relationship is insignificant while the relationship uh, direct relationship between ed to we is significant uh, now um, we can uh, come to the total indirect effects uh, we found uh, none of the indirect effects specific indirect effects there is none of the indirect effect to show that there is no mediation effect and uh, as it is as we found only uh, direct effect so we can say that there is no mediation and uh, uh, let's uh, see the total effects is also showing for the t total effect the effects of gw to we appear significant but if you will go for the uh, indigi individual effect is sure that this effect is insignificant let's go for the outer loadings as you remember that we had some issues with some of the loadings which were less than the uh, prescribed level of uh, a point uh, uh, seven and uh, we had uh, at uh, values uh, 
less than 0.7 but here after running the boot strap we can see these all these outer loadings are significant which shows that if you have increased your sample size uh, like 5000 uh, then uh, your all those outer loadings will appear significant so this problem will be solved let's go to the outer weights here also all outer weights are significant so none is in the negative let's go for the r square now as you have known that the r square shows the explanatory power um, of the model to explain the variation in our main uh, endogenous variable we can see that these r square for our main endogenous variable w is a uh, significant and as you know that the r square values depend upon the number of the independent variables we will go for the adjusted r square value and we can say the that the adjusted r square values for w is also a uh, significant and um, let's go to the f square value which shows the effect side which show uh, where uh, um, which means that we want to see that whether the relationship is meaningful or not so here we can see that the direct relationship between e d u w e is uh, uh, significant as uh, well as uh, it has uh, it's effective also and uh, with the value 0 0.044 and uh, let's go to the see the this relationship appear uh, it's not doesn't appear meaningful because effect size is less than that let's go to the you can see the av also remember we had some issues in our pls algorithm we had uh, some issues with our ave as you remember that av for the ed and w are less than 0.5 which was a prescribed criteria but here we can see that for after running the bootstrap these AVs values appear significant which shows that if you have increased your sample uh, you could have the significant values and now come to the composite reliability rho a Cronbach alpha all appear significant for SRMR also for uh, so you can have the part uh, coefficient histograms also for indirect and total effects and uh, so uh, this bootstrapping will give you the uh, statistical significance and it will show you that if you have the increase the sample size whether these loadings will be significant or not so we had uh, some issues with the AVE that after bootstrapping we can we have that, uh, uh, that statistical significance of these values now after running the bootstrap we will go for the assessing the structure model in our next session Thank you.